In our Missing series this week, we have new age progression photos of a missing mother and her son from Georgia. Paula and Brandon Wade vanished in 2002. She was 25 and, by all accounts, excited about an upcoming move that would put her closer to her family. Brandon was just three years old at the time. Paula's sister has fought for two decades now to keep attention on this case and make sure that Paula and Brandon are not forgotten. New age progression photos and new hope for a cold case. Paula and Brandon Wade, after more than two decades, her family still thinking of him as Munchkin. She called him Munchkin, my parents called him Munchkin. When he was first born, he was just so little and it just stuck, it was a little Munchkin. A little boy with a big love of sports. Oh my goodness, he couldn't get enough of playing ball. It didn't matter what time of day it was. It was, play ball with me. Come on, play ball with me. In 2002, Paula worked at the Sam's Club in Valdosta, Georgia, handling membership. She was always um, looking to help people. She was always a team player. Maria Manning, now an assistant manager, she says Paula offered her the job that changed her life. She saw something in me and wanted to add me to her team. Manny lived in the same apartment complex and often carpooled with Paula and Brandon. But she adored him. She would always have him with her. She was so proud of him. That was her baby. She was proud of him. Paula's husband was military, stationed five hours away at Shaw Air Force Base in South Carolina. Paula made plans to transfer to a new Sam's Club in Orlando near her family. She was very excited to be moving, and we just kept talking about how the cousins were going to get to grow up together. A week before that move, mother and son vanished. Paula was last seen leaving work Saturday, October 12th. On Sunday, she missed a weekly call with her parents and then didn't show up for work Monday morning. I knew immediately that something was up because she always was at work. That's why they immediately reacted because Paula didn't miss work. She was always on time. A supervisor sent someone to check Paula's apartment. Her Chevy Blazer was in the lot, but no sign of Paula or Brandon. No signs of struggle, however, the car was there, her purse was there, um, her glasses. She needs her glasses to see from me to you. Everything was there, the keys, her ID card, everything was still there, except Paul and Brandon, a car seat was also missing. Police searched the complex and wooded areas nearby, followed leads and twice deployed cadaver dogs. They went to uh, other geographical areas based on those tips, searched those areas and did not find anything of evidentiary value. Now, after 21 years, new age progression photos on the FBI website and a new detective going over the case. A front page USA Today article marking Mary's annual trip to Valdosta for the anniversary. The mission is to make sure that they're not forgotten and to make sure that the community knows that they are still missing. To this day, no suspects. Police won't confirm if polygraphs were administered only that they looked into Paula's husband and also questioned a male college student Paula had taken on as a roommate to help pay the bills. They have given us the, the information that we were asking for and that they did cooperate with the interviews, yes. For Paula's sister, the wait goes on. We just wanna know where Paula and Brandon are. We just want answers. And hopefully somebody sees your segment and they go, I know something, let me call in. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.